have one drafted that can be used. There's nothing illegal about these contracts. We just don't have standardized versions of them. The other thing that we're pointing out to you in the option to contract is the buyer is basically buying time to determine whether they're going to complete a transaction. Do you remember that? It can conversely be said that the seller is leaving a offer open for a period of time. What would motivate a seller to leave an offer open for a period of time? Money. And options are based on the concept of consideration, right? You can't get something for nothing. How did the buyer get time to determine whether he was going to buy this property? He paid some money for it. Okay, so consideration is necessary in an option contract. Does that make sense so far? Okay, also, option contracts are based on well-defined terms. How much is the option money? $2,000. What is the option term? Two years. What was the option for? To buy the property at $200,000. You do realize I just made those up. It's the same example I use in class, but obviously, options don't have to be those exact terms. They could be other terms. Once you enter into the option contract, do you remember that options are unilateral contracts? The optionee has a unilateral right to complete the contract. If he says sell during the option period, then the optionor must sell. What if the optionor says, dude, if you don't buy it, I'm going to sell it to somebody else? Isn't he kind of limited? The optionor doesn't have that right. He's bound to these terms during that period of time. What if the optionee does not? exercise this option. What happens to the option money? Seller keeps it. But i got to be honest with you, sellers will keep it anyway. He already cashed that check a long time ago. Okay? Whether you exercise the option or not, you've got what you paid for. You've got the time. But it does bring up another point that I was uh, just happened to run into while we're talking about it. Option checks and due diligence fee checks should be made to whom? The seller. The seller. And the seller can cash that check when? Technically, the effect embedded in the contract. Yeah, just as it goes on the contract. He can cash that money as opposed to earnest money, which goes in a what? Trust, Trust account. Perfect. I love it. I love it. Read those questions carefully, by the way. I know you know it. Just read them carefully. Uh, option contract, option fee, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we said all that. And then contracts for preemptive rights. The right of first refusal basically is exactly what it says. We're in into a contract that says if you ever decide to sell it, give me the first shot. I doubt seriously that you're going to need to know deep depth about uh, preemptive right contracts. Landlord and tenant, feel like we just talked about this, so you should in fact be very stellar on these. Rights and duties of the uh, landlord. The duties of the landlord are all tied to provide a fit and habitable premises. That sound about right? Uh, landlord, something breaks a major system on the house, you need to fix it, and you need to do so within a reasonable period of time. For a landlord not to fulfill his duties, he could in fact be considered to be in what word start with the letter B? Breach. He could be a small boy start with the letter N. Okay. I should be more specific. I should be more specific. If the landlord is in breach, what right does the tenant have? Constructive eviction, and don't forget that timeline. Tenant. You can withhold rent only after having removed yourself from the premises. Another way of looking at that is by saying this. Can the tenant just simply say, I'll tell you what, I'll pay you your rent when you fix it. Can they do that? No. Not legally. Can the tenant pay for it himself and then subtract that from the uh, rent and give that to the landlord? Not without. Not without the agreement of the landlord. He can't do it. There is no condition in North Carolina that allows a tenant to stay on a property and withhold rent. Perfect. Uh, landlord's rights, obviously, they have the right to collect rent. But if the tenant stops paying, if the tenant stops paying or otherwise breaches the lease, how is the landlord going to get rid of them if he won't go? Through the, <laughs> through the eviction process, okay? And that is a process. You're not just going to kick them out. You have to go through the eviction uh, process. Who are you going to request an eviction? What public official are you going to argue for an eviction before? The civil magistrate. You're going to request an eviction before a civil magistrate, okay? Uh, a landlord is not going to just simply, well, let me rephrase that. It's illegal for a landlord to just simply change the locks when the tenant goes to uh, work or throw all their stuff out on the front lawn when the tenant goes to work. Those are examples of what are known as what? 
self-help and self-help evictions are always illegal. Okay? Eviction, constructive eviction, self-help eviction. Make sure you know those words and the significance of those words. Also, do you remember the question that I asked you last week? Can a landlord ever make the tenant unilaterally responsible for repairs? No. I can enter into an agreement that says you're going to do your own repairs, but at the end of the day, I am obligated by law to maintain a fit and habitable premises, so I can never deny uh, that. Okay? Uh, let's see. The retaliatory eviction is what it says. Da -da -da. You've got that other stuff I just talked about. Tenant Security uh, Deposits Act, Tenant Security Deposits Act, appropriate use of tenant security deposits. You can use it for uh, unpaid rent. You can use it for breach with damages. You can use it for damages beyond normal wear and tear, is what I'm saying, making sense so far. If you have to evict the tenant, you can use it for evictions. If they move out early, you can use it for advertising the property for uh, to relet the property. All that sound good so far? Okay. Be familiar with the difference between damages beyond normal wear and tear and those that are considered normal wear and tear. I pointed you to a page in your book, and I just said, just take a look at these. I expect they're going to be exactly what you think that they are going to be. Tenant security deposit, what else do we need to know? Oh, when are you going to get the security deposit back to the tenant? Within how many days? 30 days. You're going to give them an accounting within 30 days. Look, I don't know that they would ever test you on the 60-day rule. But keep in mind, the 60-day rule only applies if there was so much damage that you couldn't literally figure it out within 30 days. You couldn't get your quotes back, okay? I, I, I just think the 30-day rule should be sufficient to get you up through. Tenant security deposits, hey, can you collect a, uh, can you collect a uh, pet fee? Yes. yes. Who can you not collect a pet fee for? Service. service animals, okay. Can you charge someone with a service animal more? No. no. Can't collect a pet fee, can't charge them more, and if their pet does damage, can you take it out of security deposit? I'm sorry, if their service animal does damage, can you take it out of security deposit? Yes. Absolutely, you, I can't do that. Okay, but, uh, where can security deposits be held? If you are, yeah, oh, okay, actually, thank, yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Okay, well, let's go ahead and kill a license loss comment as long as we're here as well. Uh, where can it be held? If you are a real estate agent managing property for others, you have only one choice. The money must be in a trust account. And that trust account should be either in North Carolina or in a bank or SNL that is federally insured and allows the North Carolina Real Estate Commission audit privileges. In other words, they're authorized to do business in the state of North Carolina. Do y'all remember that comment from license law? So, so far, so good. Okay, there's one thing that I didn't spend a lot of time talking about, and the reason I didn't spend a lot of time talking about it is it doesn't apply to real estate agents. So I, hopefully you won't have to address this on the test. But if you are a landlord without a real estate license, did you know that your security deposits either have to be in a trust account, but a landlord that doesn't have a real estate license has another option. They could actually buy a performance bond. They could insure the security deposit. I didn't spend a lot of time talking about that, and the reason is simply because we're agents. It seems like we should know what agents have to do with it, and the rule for agents is it has to be in a trust account. Okay? Oh, lease types. Get yourself an easy point on this. This is no different than what we talked about on uh, Friday. I'm going to go through it very quickly, unless you tell me you didn't understand it on Friday. Uh, fixed, flat, and gross. That's very typical of your residential lease. Where at the first of the month, you gave the landlord a check, and then you didn't have to pay for it. Look, I knew you had to pay for your own utilities to power the company and maybe some other stuff as well. But you gave one check to the landlord, and the landlord took care of the taxes and insurance on the building. Okay? As opposed to, remember, the line in the sand here, and almost everything else really applies to commercial properties, right? So when we talk about the uh, net lease, in a net lease, the tenant pays not only some flat amount, but also a prorated share of the common expenses. Did you write down in your notes from Friday, TICAM charges, taxes, insurance, common area maintenance? That would be common uh, expenses that the uh, tenant would pay. Percentage lease, typical of retail restaurant, where to some extent it's based on a percentage of your sales. Okay, I don't see you guys taking a lot of notes on these, so I'm assuming you feel good for Friday's lecture. Okay. On Friday's test as well. TICAM, uh, it's uh, common area maintenance, taxes, insurance, and CAM common area maintenance. Graduated index, full service, uh, da, 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 I think we're okay on that. 
sell at least back, did we talk about, I think we didn't even mention sell at least back, did we? Yeah, so we've literally talked about all those. Unless you're telling me otherwise, I'm skipping. Uh, definition of a property management the point I was trying to make to you there and uh, then and now is simply that property management as manager as we perceive it in this class is a licensed broker. Okay, is a licensed uh, broker. Difference between property manager and resident. Resident manager might not be licensed, and by this point you've heard this rule like six times over the last couple of uh, days. Unlicensed people can show properties for lease, but they can't show properties for sale. Unlicensed people can fill in the blanks of pre-print and form, but they cannot negotiate. You remember these two little lists? Okay, good, good. I gave you a definition of upfitting on uh, Friday, and then even in this note here, you've heard me say this a dozen times by this point, in your cash flow statement, and remember we're not doing math, to, so to speak, today. Debt service is not an operating expense on the uh, operating uh, statement. Debt service may help you find your cash flow, but it does not help you find your NOI. Uh, can you picture it? Yes. Yeah. Picture your cash flow chart there, and you're going to be uh, fine. By the way, for those of you who did not attend the uh, Saturday uh, section, uh, session, what the heck were you thinking? <laughs> uh, you do realize everybody did get the email that I posted it up on YouTube. It's not designed to be sexy or anything. It, it is what it is. It's me answering those questions. So you have the question, you have the written answer, and if you like it better coming from my mouth, then you see that as well. Um, tomorrow, I mean, if you got really desperate, I guess it's probably not going to happen in this one so never mind. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, if, if you call me in a timely manner, I might can do one on the board, film it, and put it up on that. But honestly, just use it, the math for class review. That's really what you need to be doing at this point. Uh, fair housing. Do you know, let me remind you, fair housing, this is what I said when I introduced fair housing. Three acts, okay? The Civil Rights Act of 1866 addressed what class only? Okay. Only race. It addressed only race, and there were no exceptions to this uh, act. Okay, and it included all walks of life, not just real estate. All that sound familiar to you? Okay, and then I said there's the Federal Fair Housing Act and the State Fair Housing Act. Both of them have the same prohibitions. What I mean by that is you can't discriminate in the sale or rental of housing. You can't discriminate in the advertising of the seller rental of housing. You can't advertise it. Uh, you can't discriminate in brokerage services. You can't discriminate in financing for the seller rental of housing. That's what I mean by the same prohibition. And then the seven same protected classes, fresh court, familial status, religious, sex, handicap, color, race, national origin. By the time of the test, you should be able to say them that quickly. Okay? And Watch out for advertising when we're talking about fair housing, okay? Uh, in regards to fair housing, can I run an ad that basically, uh, I, I don't know, I can't even think of a good example at this point. Can I run an ad that advertises the house, three bedroom, two baths, anything wrong with that? Advertise the price, anything wrong with that? Nothing wrong with that, assuming that's not a blind ad, right? Now. Assuming that's not a blind ad. Can I uh, run an ad that says no children? Can I run an ad that says no smoking? No smoking's fine. How about no pets? Is that okay? Technically it's okay. I wouldn't recommend it, but uh, you could say that. You couldn't say, you could say something like no pets, but we allow service animals. Okay? Uh, could you run an ad that uh, says, uh, I don't know, fill in any protected class, and you're going to be okay on that. I like it where property management and fair housing come together. Run an ad for tenants. Credit checks are okay. Um, work history is okay. Number of people in the family, then the reason I would need to know that is to know whether you're above the occupancy level. Stuff like that as you're putting it together. Uh, take some practice questions so you'll see how we ask those questions. Uh, Federal Fair Housing Act. Do you remember the exemptions to the Federal Fair? Matter of fact, let's be honest. Do you remember the main exemption to the Federal Fair Housing Act? The for sale by owner. Obviously, they did not use the services of a real estate agent. Okay? They have less than three houses total. Or if they live in one of the units, they could have up to a quad. That's the main exception. There are also exceptions for religious houses, and there are exceptions for elderly housing as well, and private clubs. But the major one is going to be that for sale item. Right because in the state act, same prohibitions, same set of protected classes, but different, but different uh, on the for sale by owner. The state act is not exempt for sale by owner, right? With me. How are you going to study this? 
I'm going to send you back to my midterm again. Normally I teach this earlier in the semester. So go back and look at my midterm. You're going to miss questions on fair housing on my midterm because they are very hard. All right? And then once you look at the answer, you're going to say, oh, let me figure this out. If you can, send me a text and I'll tell you exactly what you missed on that. Because once you get your mind straight on that, you're going to be okay. Uh, in regards to uh, fair housing, please make sure you remember the words uh, thoroughly. Next page. Blockbuster, steering, and red line. Make sure you have an uh, example of each of those because that clearly is going to be uh, um, good fodder for test purposes. And then right down at the bottom of the previous page before you flip over is the ADA, the American with Disabilities Act. ADA, not specific to housing, right? Not specific to housing. ADA had to do with reasonable, uh, reasonable access to public accommodations, which would include like uh, commercial buildings and stuff like that. Okay, you guys deserve a break today. I have this 12:30. Who am I kidding? I need a break. <laughs>